What is up, Rad Potential YouTube, and welcome to another Build Secrets Rad Formation video about rotary engines in detail where you guys get to learn some really cool stuff about these engines. So, what we are talking about today is rotor housings. As you can see, I have a plethora of them here. This is not all of them. I have a whole bunch more outside and stuff up there. But I've selected from my good and bad sets to show you guys the differences, things to uh, look out for when you build your engine with them, and uh, just kind of the difference. Yeah, so anyways, moving on. On the left here, I've got the 12A housings, and on the right, I've got the 13B housings. I've kind of started, or we're going to go ahead and start with the 12A stuff, and use these to show you condition and things to look for before you rebuild an engine with. And then I'm going to use the 13B housings to show you guys like variations in the housings themselves. Um, I'm going to assume a lot more of you guys are going to be building 13B stuff. So those tips and tricks, um, or I guess we'll say tips and tricks, but that information will pertain to you if you buy used housings or just buy one used housing, etc. So anyways, let's start with condition. First things first, if you haven't seen the original video um, for the Build Secrets that I outlined this book here, um, the link is up here. In the book, this is basically like your criteria for rebuilding or reusing parts. And you can see they show an extent of chrome chipping two millimeters in from the sides. Okay, so, you know, that's basically measuring how far in from the edge of the housing. Do you have any chrome coming off? If it's more than this, they recommend not using it. Okay, another thing to look at in housings as well, we're just going to go straight through the book, is... Is the coolant packs are the coolant passages worn out? Okay, and by worn out, I mean corroded, chewed up. Maybe somebody put some stop leak in there and it tore them up. They're blocked. Whatever. You got to make sure that when you clean the coolant passages, they're not so thin that you won't get a good seal with your coolant seals. And this is more so important on the old school rotary stuff because the coolant grooves are in the housings themselves right here so you can see this coolant groove okay so condition of housings I'll show you some bad ones some good ones some mint ones so right here is a 12a housing this came out of my 12a bridge half bridge port that was in the silver car a while back you can see the housing doesn't look terrible until you hear this hear all that grooves you hear all that noise you can see the scoring in this housing and the the gnarliness of how chewed up it is right this was ra super seals 12a bridge lots of rpm lots of abuse um from me so this housing is junk it also doesn't show much chrome plating but it is just sad that it's chewed up or chrome plating coming off so I'll go ahead and put him on the ground the next one this is a case of an OEM 12A engine that I took apart. And you can see right there that that chrome chipping extends well past the 2 millimeter mark. Here's my Milwaukee flashlight. You can see how gnarly that is. So, the rest of the housing is seemingly okay. Um, this chipping, especially in this area of the housing, you can see in the exhaust portion of the housing, will not... I guess it it will not give you exceptional like power loss, um, smoking, anything weird. This is simply going to cause excessive wear to your apex seals, and it's not going to make you less compression because it's not in the compression side of the rotor housing. So especially when looking at chrome flake, paying attention to the top and the side of the housing where the spark plug's on, that's where all your power is going to be coming from. Anything down here in the exhaust side, um, typically it may wear your engine parts out faster, but if you do need to use the housings, you can't afford to, um, you can make some sacrifices in that area. This one junk. So we're two for five here on good and bad. Now you can see this housing right here. Looks like it was on the bottom of the Titanic, pretty chewed up, but look at that surface. Nicely cleaned up. You can see we have a little bit of chrome chipping here. Might be close to that 2 millimeter mark, but we're not seeing much chipping as we go up the housing this way. So, this 
minuscule amount. I guess I'm going up the wrong side. But we're not seeing much chipping as we go up this way. There's some right there. There's that just surface rust. Nope, it's chipped off. Alright, so a little bit worse condition than I thought, but we don't see much chipping as we go up this way. So this one, definitely a candidate to be used in a rebuild. One thing that you want to do as well, if you are going to use a housing that is, say, in A condition or B condition, C condition, just you be the judge, um, make sure that you match it in that engine with a housing of similar condition. You don't want one rotor um, to, one, have more wear than the other, but two, make more compression or more power than the other one. These housings, you can't really resurface them. Um, there's some guys that will put these on like a sander um, and a cylindrical sander and run it around kind of like a home just a hone to just clean the surface up but you can't put chrome back on these now I know some places are working on it and maybe you can pay a lot of money and have it done um, but for now it's simply easier if you can find another set of housings to use those so going ahead we're gonna move on down the line here another 12a housing you can see whoa looks like these came from the same engine right this one is nearly perfect not a single issue up in there. Minty fresh. No major build up in anything. Coolant grooves, not really corroded, but just titanic level crusty. So that housing is a prime example of one that I keep on the shelf for when I need to re do a rebuild for myself. No, I will not sell my housings to any of you. Sorry. And I'm using my junk ones to build a mailbox. So this one, Notice, it doesn't match this other one that's perfectly mint. However, this one is dang near perfectly mint as well. So, these two housings, I keep them on the shelf next to each other because despite this one and this one coming from the same motor, I would use this one and this one in the same motor and save that one for whenever I had another, like, B or C condition housing. So, that basically sums up all of the things you're going to need to know about the condition of the, the rotor housing chrome surface. You can see in some cases what's called chatter, um, which I have a 13B housing to show you the chatter right here. You can see these lines in the housing. Um, maybe, sort of, kind of. Basically, a chatter line is a line that goes across the housing this way. And that's caused from the apex seal jumping on the surface and wearing it out. So if your apex seal springs are, are soft, you can have that happen where it chatters up the side. Um, I don't really have any that are too, were, too as bad as that one. But all of this black stuff is just carbon buildup. That stuff will come off with a Scotch-Brite pad um, and some brake clean. No big deal there. Um, you might see some wear underneath the, the carbon, but generally not. So, now, we're going to move into the more fun part of this procedure, which is making sure the housings that you have, the pair of them, you can use them together. So, some people don't care that an early 12A housing right here looks different from a late model 12A housing right here. Notice the little... I in the casting here, this one's solid. Notice this is chopped out for weight reduction. This one's not. Notice the late model 12A has these guards around the plugs. The early ones do not. So you see, that's smooth. This one's not smooth. You can build an engine with both of these together. I do not think the spark plug spacing is any different. Um, but getting to that, with 13Bs, you need to be very careful about the housings you are using together because on some motors series 4, series 5 you name it different ones they have variations in the spark plug spacing and the spark plug timing on the rotors or on the rotors on the housings so you can see right here this one is obviously closer together than this one. This one is obviously further apart than this one. There's variations in the casting right here. You can see that one's thick. It's got these marks. This one, stepped lip here, big cast mark up here. Obviously, this is weight reduction not present, weight reduction present. This one, weight reduction not present. Spark plug spacing is a little different. So, 
Out of this set, they're kind of all different colors, but could you guess which two might go together? Probably that one. Maybe that one. Notice, same casting down here. Same spark plug casting here. Same casting here. I would check this with a caliper to make sure it's right. So, be very aware of your spark plug timing on your housings. If you see somebody selling one used housing on the interweb, don't just jump in and buy it because it works with your motor because it might not. You might want to have them investigate further or for sure tell you what series that housing is from. Another thing that's important, very, GSLSE 13B housings, all old school 13B housings, and all 12A housings have coolant grooves in the housing. RX8s have coolant grooves in the housing. FDs, FCs, all have the coolant grooves in the irons. You cannot use a GSLSE 13B housing in a Series 4 FC engine because rubber doesn't seal against rubber, it's too big of a gap, right? You can use a GSLSE housing in an RX-8 engine, but you'll have to deal with the center exit exhaust port on the GSLSE housing and fill in the other ones, or have five ports for your exhaust if you do that. There's a guy that's built an RX-8 engine with GSLSE housings, because RX-8 housings are getting hard to come by. And usually they're always trash when you take apart an RX-8 engine. So, mentioning exhaust, moving over to that side of things. There are variations as well in the exhaust ports on these housings. Not only in size, shape, all that jazz. So, looking through this set of housings right here, all these 13B housings, you can see we have four, well two are the same and two are very different looks right here. On these housings, there is what's called an exhaust sleeve. That's this discolored piece of steel within the aluminum. There's a roll pin generally right there. It's covered in carbon right here um, that holds these in. And this is different for your engines. These middle two have the exhaust sleeves removed. I wouldn't necessarily recommend running your engine with the exhaust sleeves removed. However, it can be done. It's not necessarily really going to hurt anything, but that steel is there to help protect the aluminum um, just from flames, fire, heat, the whole etc. deal, and to help direct the flow. Now, you're going to see this one on the end, and you're going to be like, what in the heck is that diffuser-looking thing in there? Well, the diffuser is for NA cars in order to help, I guess, slow down the exhaust flow a little bit, maybe, in order to have a more efficient burn inside the engine just for emissions sake um, I don't think any of the turbo models have it at all this one on the left here is a GSLSE housing and that one um, looks like a turbo the turbo exhaust ports are huge and they're they're clean straight cutting through so yeah be aware of that the other thing to be aware of too is um, these EGR recirculations so you see this hole here and these two holes that hole those two holes the holes there, there should be a port somewhere on the side of this up in the top. Just be aware of that as well when you do go to pick different housings. Getting the roll pins out for these sleeves is a real pain in the butt. Um, it can be done, but it's still a real pain in the butt. So, ooh, before I forget, another thing to remember, oil metering pump. You can see the GSLSE one is lower on the housing. These FC housings, they're all about the same. Um... Just keep that in mind when you're building building engines. Um, 12A stuff doesn't have any oil metering features on them at all. You will see as well, I guess I can show you on some of these 12A ones if they don't have it. Oh yeah, here we go. Um, on 12A cars and... Do NA, NA ones have them? I don't know. Comment below if you know for sure. But on 12A cars, and I know the turbo cars have this as well, they have a coolant access right here where your like semi peripheral port um, would go if you would have this sleeved and run a semi peripheral intake port 
On the 12 A's, both of these are open to help recirculate um, coolant through the intake to heat the carburetor up. On 13 B's, you'll find on a majority of engines that one of the housings has an opening and the other housing doesn't. I believe on turbo cars, they use that to circulate coolant through the intake manifold to cool the turbo. So keep that in mind as well. You can put a freeze plug in these to seal them off. Um, but just be careful sometimes the freeze plugs will leak. Um, let's see, I think this this 12A one I had sealed up with a quarter. You can see there. And then these are OEM as well, so they won't have anything in it. But yeah, I think that about sums everything up. Um, I don't know if you can buy brand new housings for... Uh, like 12 A's and all the old school stuff anymore. I'm pretty sure you can't. You're going to have to find used ones or if Atkins or whoever is selling them, um, they might want a pretty penny for them. I have seen um, where it has been successfully done that you can take a 13B housing and put it in a mill. So you take a 13B housing, which is thinner than a 12A housing. You can take a 13B housing, mill five millimeters off each side, and then put the coolant grooves in it and use a 13B housing as a 12A housing. If you think about it, if your 13B housings have some chrome flake and you do that machine work, you can take the chrome flake away basically because you're using the inner portions of the uh, 13B housing. Also, I have seen people take FC housings and machine the coolant grooves into them so they could use them in an old school four port or even a GSLSE engine. Um, or, I mean, you could in an RX-8 engine in theory as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess that's pretty much it. Here's your direct comparison, 12A versus 13B here, super narrow here, big and wide. Um, one thing, too, that's neat, kind of an aside, you can put a 13B header on a 12A engine if you slot the holes. The ports are the 13B ports are so big that even on a 12A, they fit over the 12A exhaust holes. So you can use a 13B header on a 12A, but you can't use a 12A header on a 13B. It's way too just tiny. Um, my silver car has a 13B header in it that's machined, or I just wallered the holes out with a Dremel die grinder to make them fit. So with that, I'm going to uh, quit boring you guys to death. Get super stoked for the next video. Okay, I did a bike video on Monday. I filmed that stuff. I figured it was pretty cool, just a different mindset. You know, maybe somebody will, will get it and... And I wanted to film it. Good content to, to show things on a smaller level and another portion of the stuff I do here. But this past weekend, if you saw the Instagram post on the Rad Potential Instagram, um, Calvin and I, uh, we started working on Vert Truck and we built a whole new chassis for it. And it is sick. So stay tuned for that video going up probably Thursday. Um, and... This, this truck's going to be wild, guys. It's going to be super wild. So after that video gets uploaded, I'll put a link to it up here, um, or I'll for sure link the playlist uh, for the vert truck build. But Calvin is getting one heck of a truck, and it is going to be mega capable on any curvy road. And it's a convertible repo. Like, what could, what's not to like? So anyways, guys, comment below with any questions you have. I'll go ahead and do my best to address anything technical about, you know, housings, this, that, and the other. Um... As far as, you know, choosing the wear, choosing the chrome, that's up to you guys. I'm not going to be the guy to say to use it and then it end up messing something up for you. So I've, I've shown you what I would use and reuse. Use your best judgment um, on that. And, uh, yeah, keep the builds going. Expect more, another video on probably probably irons maybe. Maybe a little, we'll dabble into talking about porting. Um and uh, that's kind of the next bit for, for this build series. So thank you guys very much for watching. And uh, have a wonderful holiday season. Keep it red.